just don't make sense. What don't? This whole Paranthibus Boisei situation. How so, Chrome Dome? Listen, kid, you got Muxy, so sit down and let me explain. Paranthibus Boisei, he's been stumping people since he was found by Mary Leakey in 1955. She didn't even know what she had till 1959. So it took her four years to figure that out? And don't stop there, bucko. People used to think the evolution of man was a straight line. The Paranthibus Boisei, he threw this all out of whack. He's a unique species, indirectly related to Homo sapiens. I just not cousin, see? So- I ain't finished! Boise I thrived around 2.3 to 1.2 million years ago in the rich grasslands of East Africa. So what caused the species, who excelled in their ecosystem for longer than Homo sapiens has been around, to go extinct? It just don't make sense. So why does Boise I look so different from us? That just don't add up. From what the files say about the genus Paranthropus, both Boise I and his brother Robustus, also known as the robust Australopiths, are descended from Australopithecus afarensis, so they split off from the Homo lineage real early on. So what you're saying is that it all started with afarensis. They split in two. You got the Paranthropus lineage and the Homo lineage. So what made Paranthropus take a million year dirt nap, and why are all the Homo sapiens still walking around? That's still a mystery, but here's the kicker. We don't even know what the things ate. You take a look at that kisser of theirs and you'd think they ate nuts or seeds or something. How do you know they ate nuts? That seems bananas. It is bananas, but them's the breaks, kid. They've got reduced canines and incisors, so that rules out a typical ape diet of leaves and soft fruits. Plus, they're molars, they're the size of states, and covered with enough enamel to make any dentist jump for joy. So what about the big fin on his head? That's the sagittal crest, an anchor for their big honking jaw muscles. That's also why their cheeks have got such big zygomatic arches, too. Boys down in the lab have found that they would have been capable of massive bite forces. Exactly what you'd expect from the so-called Nutcracker Man. So I guess they ate hard food then? If only it were that easy, kid. While all morphology would make you think that, them nerds in CSI have found nothing to prove they ate nuts. Zilch. Said all they can find is the remains of C4 plants in the teeth. I'm not sure what C4 plants are. Sedges and the like. Grasses, kid. You gotta keep up. Like I was saying, C4 plants in the teeth. And the microwave. They suggest grass too. So what's the deal? You don't need an ungodly bite force just to nibble on some grass. But why the mess of mandibles? A layout of the skull would be able to support the constant stresses of chewing and grinding down plant matter. One idea is that the strong bite force is an adaptation present in all robust astrolopiths, and that this trait was never lost, even after Boise Eye specialized into eating grass. So everyone agrees it's grass? So you got two lines of thought. Boise Eye specialized to be eating grass all day, and that's it. The bite force just came along for the ride, with the parts needed to comfortably chew. Or, it's just an ancestral state of Paranthropus. They call this the repetitive load hypothesis. But some people think that the massive mandibles are more of a fallback plan, see? Fallback plan for what? You live here every day just munching on grass, but when the going gets tough, you have to resort to eating seeds and nuts. Those following this mindset have proposed that maybe people are looking for the wrong signs of hard food in the microwave. Some markings could be mistaken for rubbing teeth together may actually be the marks left behind by hard shells. The jury's still out on that one. We need more information regarding the mechanics of ancient African plants. Sounds like everyone can agree they ate grasses, though. I guess you're right, kid. But even that's still confusing. The shape of their molars, they don't have sharp edges. They're broad and wide, which would not apply the stresses needed to shred up food like grasses, at least based on the current understanding of teeth morphology. Somebody could figure out how broad, blunt teeth could efficiently process grasses, then maybe we could talk with certainty. All this is to say, even when hypotheses can agree, they're not that satisfying. I guess it's up to you now, kid. You gotta crack the case of the Nutcracker Man. But in a nutshell, it's still a mystery whether our Boise eye ate grass or nuts. For all we know, the case may remain unsolved.